movie lovers, it's your girl Ahina Arta here with 411 on Movies. It feels so good to be back on your screen. A lot went down these past few days, so trust me when I say I have a lot to update you on and I got some exclusive, exclusive interviews, so let's get right into it. <laughs> Let's start off with the African premiere of Black Panther Wakanda Forever, which took place here in Lagos, Nigeria. I can undoubtedly say this is the best premiere yet in Nigeria. And of course, it's Marvel Studios' first premiere in Africa, so they came prepared. They even came with the stars. Forever TV was well represented by yours truly, and trust me when I say it was lit. I spoke with Lupita Yongo, Dinaguira, Ren Kugler, Winston Duke, and Leticia Wright. Not to brag, but we had a great time. So you have to check it out on this channel, of course, after watching this show. Now, moving on to other exciting news, veteran filmmaker Zeb Ejiro is making a comeback as a director for the reboot of the 1996 classic Dummy Tila. The filmmaker teamed up with Film One Entertainment and Film Tribe to reboot the classic, which will follow the story of four prostitutes who find themselves at a crossroads and must join forces in this tale of survival. Now, this is not a remake, neither is it a sequel, it's just a reboot. And Zeb Ejiro said he is working with unknown faces. He promises to take us back to the core of filmmaking. He wants to show us how a good movie looks like and we are here for it. For a veteran like you, you never retire. Even though you say, oh, I've retired, but you, you never no, have I'm not retired now. I'm got, uh, the next tomorrow I'm going to location. We are shooting Domitila, the sequel. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to be on that project. Yes. I, are you directing it? Yeah, I'm directing it. Oh, you've heard of, yeah, you've heard of the project? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that 2020, Omoni Oboli is going to be on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, we have to look forward to that. We have to look out for that. Anyway, thank you very much. It's not news that this year's Nollywood films failed to meet the eligibility standards set for the Oscar International Feature Film category. Now, this is according to a consensus reached by the Nigerian Official Selection Committee and OSC. While many are still struggling to understand the requirements for eligibility, Daniel K. Daniel, who is a member of the Academy, shares his thoughts on the NOSC process and the Oscar saga. And why is eligibility put side by side with movie titles? The truth is, selecting a movie would have put us, you know, on the map. We you know we want Nigeria is doing well. We're third in the world. We want to keep doing well. You know, we're gaining a lot of traction and recognition in the music world, even in you know film. And, we're, and um, it would have been nice to have a selection and then let it go out there to Hollywood and then let them say, uh, okay, it's not good enough, but. But then again, I trust Chineze. I know her personally, you know, I've known her for almost 10 years and she's only there because she's capable and yeah. because she's trusted yeah. to head that board. Mm -hmm. So um, they must have their reasons why they felt that none of the films were eligible. Now, the only thing I would say is I wish they could be more transparent. Yeah, I, be, you, you're because, inside, so. yeah I, I wish there could be a little bit more transparency because you know, a lot of people, there's a lot of rumors and the only way to dispel rumors is to tell the, you know, just come on and tell as it is. Now, I do agree with Daniel on this one. NOS should be more transparent and open regarding this issue. So I spoke to a member of NOSC, Moses Babatope, who is also the co-founder of Film One Entertainment. My question was simple. Has NOSC resolved the eligibility option? Has it been properly resolved? And here was his response. I like to not comment, but I, I think le lessons have been learned. I, I think we're wiser. As you know, creativity is very subjective. And that's where the issue comes from. I think the biggest learning for us is putting Nigeria first. That's what we're doing with this premiere. Yes, Film One Film House, we work behind the scenes, but we're a proudly Nigerian brand. And exactly. So let's learn to put our country first. The upcoming feature film, Our Marjorie, has put comedian and filmmaker Ewa Marco on a winning streak. Our Marjorie, which will be the closing film of this year's Afrif, got eight nominations at this year's Best of Nollywood Awards, Born Awards. That's not all. The movie was graciously received at the Toronto International Nollywood Film Festival, Tinip. Our Marjorie won 12 awards out of 22 nominations 
Alex Ekubo, who won the Best Actor at the festival, tells us why this movie is so special. It's a story that follows, you know, kids, slave trade and child trafficking. It's just a big, big, big amazing movie. The first, it, it premiered at the, at the Toronto International Nollywood Film Festival and we had 27 nominations and we got 12 the same night. I got Best Actor for that. It's amazing. I can't wait for you guys to see the movie. Now let's talk about the nominees for the Best of Nollywood Awards. Jade Oshiberu's Aila led with 10 nominations. Breaded Life, Almajiri, Amina Ileowo also led the nominations list. Now this year's edition introduces a new award category which is the best use of Nigerian food and Aila, Alaishe, Ileowo and Legover were nominated. The award which is Nigeria's longest running film award will take place in Oweri, Imo State come December 3rd with Imo State Governor Hope Uzodima as host. Now in Hollywood, Oscar-winning actor Daniel Kaluuya is swinging into Sony Spider-Verse. The actor has joined the cast of Sony Pictures Animation's Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which is a sequel to the groundbreaking Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which also nabbed an Academy Award. He will be voicing the role of Hobbit, Hobby Brown, aka Spider-Pop. Netflix has ordered two additional seasons of the series Monster. The first season of Monster was officially titled Dharma, Monster the Jerry Dharma Story. It follows the life and crimes of the infamous serial killer. The two new installments will each focus on other monstrous figures who have negatively impacted the society. This is according to Netflix. <laughs> Now let's check out what's new in cinemas this week. Starting with the much-awaited Black Panther Wakanda Forever, which is showing and out in cinemas across the globe. Now the question still remains, who will take on the mantle of Black Panther? Well, I guess we have to watch the film to find out. Also new this week is Wookie. With the persuasion of his wife, Greg, a former Secret Service agent, agrees to take a job brought to him by his former colleague, find and rescue the kidnapped daughter of a renowned kingpin. Truth or Dare is also new in cinemas. Three couples engaged in a drunk Truth or Dare game on an engagement night and wakes up the next morning to find themselves naked in the arms of different partners. Their relationship and trust for each other is put to test as they try to unravel the mystery behind the drunk night. And that's all on this episode of Forward Water Movies. Thank you for staying with me. My name is Ahina Arthur. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, kindly do so. Follow our Forever TV across all our social media platforms. And guess what? I'll be back to the screen next week.